and gentlemen, hey, congratulations on Sacrifice. Thank you so much. Thank you for speaking to us. Not Thank a problem. You. So what was, the, what sparked the original idea for Sacrifice for you guys? Thor, do you want to take one? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the very, very original idea comes from a short story by, by Paul Kane um, called Men of the Cloth. Um, Andy and I had uh, previously collaborated on another horror film um, called Charismata, which um, was very, very, very different to this. It was uh, kind of a, a uh, hybrid thriller, horror, police procedural, very, very um, ambitious in terms of what we were working for, uh, working with um, budget wise. And after that, uh, frankly speaking, ordeal, um, we, we uh, decided that our next project should be much more contained, much more straightforward, uh, you know, a, a few locations, a few characters. And so we were actively looking for something that embodied that. And we, and, and, and we thought we found it in this brilliant short story by, by Paul Kane. Um, but then in the process of adapting it, um, we, 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 we realized uh, from a technical point of view, it would be significantly more ambitious than our previous film um, in that it would require a vast amount of uh, SFX that we, we, just, we just couldn't uh, accommodate for. Um, but we just, we, we, we couldn't get the, the essence of the story out of, our, out of our mind. So we decided to uh, retool it um, and uh, um, simplify it to a certain extent. Um, but then ultimately we, we, we make the mistake of, uh, of um, relocating it to Norway, which happens to be the most expensive country on the, on the planet. Um, and, and suddenly it went from this self-contained, uh, small character-driven horror film to this vast, expansive, um, um, uh, horror that, 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 that centered around a, you know, thousand foot deity. So, so, uh, our intention didn't actually, um, bear fruit, but hopefully for the better, ultimately we, we got it made in the end. <laughs> now I, I was going to ask about why Norway, because would it would it would have been much easier if you'd done it in your own backyard, um, per se. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yes, it would. Um, clearly, as a folk horror, we were influenced by The Wicker Man, and every folk horror is. But we wanted to put some clear water between us and The Wicker Man, so we thought, let's not shoot it in the UK, let's shoot it somewhere else. And also let's make the visuals really different. So not really bright and sunny and flowery, but really dark and menacing. So Tor's actually half Norwegian. And so he wanted to go and see his family, I think. So he suggested Norway. And then, and then, and we, which we thought was original at the time. Um, although when, just before we started shooting, Midsummer came out, which was, a, as you're aware, a Scandinavian cult film. So, so we lost a little bit of our originality. Um, but I, I think, I think the two films are very different so i think hopefully hopefully people will see a difference between, between the two one one of the things i liked about this film was that you kind of had traces of lovecraft uh, in into this um, film talk about that and why no one could make a true you know lovecraft uh cthulhu type of film only just traces of it yeah uh... There's, oh, there's, well, there's a well-known saying, which is don't show the monster. And I, I think if you were to show Cthulhu, it's, you know, it, it, it well, I guess it's doable if you, they can make Godzilla films. I, I guess it's doable to, to show it. But I, I think we were really influenced by the story, this particular story, The Call of Cthulhu, more than anybody else, or more than any other story. And, and, and we... We kept true to that story, which was, a, which was actually quite cost efficient <laughs> because, you know, Cthulhu affects people through dreams and through spurring them to make crazy works of art, you know, and, and so we really focused on those elements and, and basically the, the idea of 
this real Lovecraftian idea of the people in the cult don't actually want to be in the cult, but they're kind of powerless under this overbearing cosmic force. So they basically they try to make do as best they can in a in a terrible situation. I, I and so it, it doesn't. Sorry, go on, Tom. No, no, after you. Yeah. So, so although it doesn't actually bear much surface resemblance to the story, the Call of Cthulhu, it's kind of you know a hundred percent set in that particular universe from that particular story. I, I personally would love to do a, a an all out Cthulhu movie one day, but we would need like three hundred million. Uh, <laughs> To, to to achieve that, I think, <laughs> but fingers crossed one day. Well, then talk about the special effects of of what you managed to do with, with you know like the some tentacles and and so on. What were when you're filming it? Did you kind of like uh, use a little bit of practical uh, tentacles, or do you, or is it all completely computerized? No, one hundred percent practical. Well, <laughs> we tried to be practical there is some visual effects enhancement um, but i guess i guess we're 95 percent practical there's no there's there are no effects that are pure pure digital you know m most of them are slightly enhanced or tidied up but it's it, it's mostly practical you know and we had lots of fun with robotic tentacles fun and games I a think. life of their own and a mind of their own when you come to shoot <laughs> <laughs> one one of the things that I um, that I found fascinating about your film was the fact that you put your cast into I don't know what the river the lake the ocean, and I felt cold. Did you did you get them through like a polar bear dip first, or were, how how did how did you manage to make them comfortable in, for that scene? Well, for most of the scenes when most of the cast were in the water wearing their robes, they had wetsuits underneath. Obviously, there's, there's one scene where the actress doesn't have a wetsuit underneath. And basically, we had, a, and, it, and it was raining that night as well, if you remember, Tor. So, I mean, I, I was pretty cold <laughs> on the shore in my coat, you know, and she, she was freezing. So we just, we, we spent so long and we had sort of two minutes of shooting and then she, the girls took her to a tent and fed her lots of hot soup and hair dryers to warm her up again. <laughs> you know, I think that was probably, you know, I think, I think she suffered for her art more than anybody else. <laughs> I guess the guys in the sea wearing wetsuits, apart from the one who got hypothermia, if you remember to all, the really <laughs> huge Viking guy, they, they all seem quite comfortable. <laughs> yeah, you need, you need a bit of method acting, I, I, I think, to really, really convince. <laughs> Excellent. Well, hey, gentlemen, hey, thank you very much uh, for making this movie Sacrifice. I, I know you guys are going to do more horror movies after this. If I had $300 million, I would give it to you guys to do a <laughs> movie. Wow. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank thank, you. thank you. you very much. Thank you. Lovely to speak to you. Thank you. Bye. Thank now. you. Thanks, Gig. <laughs>